Good day folks, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at GoPro's protective housing for the Hero 8 Black. What is it for and do you need one? Let's just jump right in and take a look. So this is the protective housing for the Hero 8 Black. So let's open it up, we'll check it out, and then we'll discuss when and why you'd want to use a product like this. This is the first year that I think it's really important to own one of these protective housings. The Hero 8 Black no longer has a protective lens. I guess it all boils down to how you use your GoPro and what you're going to be using it for, but if you're going to be doing anything where you could potentially uh, get into some dicey situations with your GoPro, uh, definitely something like this could save you a big repair bill. Um, let's open it up here and we'll take a look at it and we'll discuss it a bit more. So first off in the package, of course, we've got some instructions there. I always find these GoPro boxes are kind of weird now, the way they're uh, put together. No easy way to access everything. We've got a thumb screw. We have a buckle mount. We have a skeleton door. And if you're not quite sure what a skeleton door is, I'll kind of explain that here in a minute. And we have the protective housing here. So let's compare it to the old housing. This one here is the Super Suit, and it was for the Hero 5, 6, and 7 Black. As you can see, they are generally the same size. The one for the Hero 8 Black is slightly larger, but not by much. The big difference between the two is the one for the Hero 5, 6, and 7 Black, it required you to take off that lens protector. Then you would insert it and close it. Now, to me, that's kind of a good thing and a bad thing. First of all, uh, putting a Hero 5, 6, or 7 Black in here was kind of a pain in certain situations. If you're out doing some snorkeling, you're on the beach, you're going to go in the water. If you didn't have it pre -insert, installed you'd have to do it right there on the spot you always chance getting sand and fingerprints on the lens when you took that protective cover off but the bonus to doing that is that you were shooting through less glass so ideally you could get the best picture quality possible now with the new protective housing you just put the gopro in as is it doesn't have that removable lens so it just slides right in now that makes it a lot easier to put in and out but you're going to be shooting through more glass so we're going to do some tests to see if that makes a difference let's just go ahead here quickly and install it and see how it fits there's a little locking switch there at the top you got to push it over and then pull that whole unit up. GoPro just slides in there like that. We'll shut the door and then it just clamps closed. Now using your GoPro in a casing like this allows you to go a lot deeper in water. It allows you to go up to a depth of 60 meters. Now for most people, unless you're a scuba diver, really you're not going to be going that deep with your GoPro. But for myself, a case like this has a more important job. Now that the Hero 8 Black does not have that replaceable lens cover, it's more important than ever to make sure it's protected. Now for me, the reason I purchased it is when I'm going to be mounting my GoPro on things like RC cars. I enjoy flying drones and I also enjoy driving RC cars. Quite often I'll mount my GoPro on the top just to get some interesting footage. Mounting a GoPro on an RC car can put your GoPro in some pretty intense conditions. <laughs> A couple months ago I actually cracked the cover of my GoPro Hero 7 Black. I was driving really fast and I went a little too heavy on the brake and the thing somersaulted about 15 times. The camera survived unscathed but there was a crack in the lens. It was a pretty easy fix. I just went on Amazon, had the uh, protective cover here the next day and I was back in business. With the Hero 8 Black you can't do that so for me now on when I'm mounting this on my RC vehicles I will definitely be using this protective housing. A protective housing like this can come in handy in many different situations. If you're a motocross dirt bike, uh, maybe you've got this mounted to you and you're crawling through mud, like who knows what you're going to be doing. Something like this just gives you that little bit of extra protection and you don't have to worry about damaging your investment. Now depending on how you're using it and how you're mounting it, if it's going to be exposed to a lot of mud and muck and different things like that, you may want to consider leaving the solid back door on. Problem with that, however, is you can no longer use the touch screen on the back. So you have to make sure everything is set the way you want it before before you mount it in and close the door. But that's why they include this skeleton frame. Basically, it's a new door that goes on and it has an opening at the back so you can use your touch screen. Let's go ahead and install that now and I'll show you how that works. The other advantage to using the skeleton door is that you're gonna have much better audio. So to change the door, all we're gonna do is just gently pull down and you can see there it pops right off. We then just snap the new door in its place. As you can see now, we have full access to the touch screen, and if we're recording, we're going to have decent audio. Using it in this configuration does give you a good amount of protection. You do have to be careful as your back screen is fully exposed. Now, I've already noticed that there are some third-party ones popping up on Amazon. Quite often, you can get the third-party ones at a fraction of the cost. Third-party ones, you have to be careful sometimes. They just have bad seals on them, and they can leak water. But if you're buying a housing just for protection of your GoPro to keep it in good shape if it gets banged around a bit, those third-party ones are actually pretty cheap to buy, and once it 
gets kind of marked up and banged up, you can always just throw it out and replace it. So let's go out and do a quick test here. If you're gonna be using this protective housing just in adverse conditions, it's important to know whether it's going to affect the quality of the footage. So I've got two Hero 8 Blacks here. One we're just gonna be filming as is, and the other we're gonna be filming while it's in the protective waterproof housing. I'm gonna play both clips side by side and see if you can tell which one is in the housing. I'm not gonna put a label up to start just to see if you can tell which is which. Near the end of the clip, I'll put the label up so you can tell which one was in the housing. As soon as the side by side clip is done, we're gonna do a little quick audio test to see what the difference is in audio when one is in the housing. I do have the skeleton door on it, so it does allow for better audio. Here is an audio sample of the Hero 8 Black mounted in the waterproof protective housing. Again, this is an audio sample of the Hero 8 Black mounted in the waterproof housing. Here is an audio sample of the Hero 8 Black without the waterproof housing. Again, this is an audio sample without the waterproof housing. Personally, myself, I could not tell a single difference between the two clips. I don't think it's a concern if you're buying that just to protect your GoPro in adverse conditions. You don't have to worry about getting uh, degraded video quality. So yeah, folks, like I said, just a quick look at the protective housing for the GoPro Hero 8 Black. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and found some value in it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.